Kit Guru, and in this video I'm inviting you along to build a brand new gaming PC with me. I'd like to thank our sponsors from Corsair and Asus who've made this build possible. So it's going to be sort of like a tutorial, like build it with me, I'm not sure how it's going to go. Um, I'm quite excited to do it, hopefully you can sort of learn something along the way. Uh, as you can sort of tell, I've gone with a black and white theme, I love my white computer components, like um, peripherals, and Corsair have got a ton of really nice uh, like white components at the moment. So I've got like the white RM750X power supply, I've got the uh, white Corsair Vengeance RAM, and I've also got the white 570X crystal case. And I'm gonna start off this build by unboxing that and preparing it by putting in the brand new LL120 RGB fans. And I'm quite excited to see what those are gonna look like. Okay, it's time to get this case unboxed. I'm very excited to see what it's gonna look like in person because when I was looking at pictures of it online, I thought it was absolutely beautiful. It's got loads of like tempered glass on it. And of course it is white. I can't see it yet. There's too much foam. I'm not sure how I'm gonna unbox this because it's quite big and awkward. I might do it on the floor. Okay, I've got it out of the box. Comes with lots of really good foam. Sort of on its side at the moment. I'm just trying to be really careful because even though it's tempered glass, it's um, probably still gonna break if I drop it. Uh, so we've got like the manual, like installation guide. Hopefully I won't be needing that on camera, that could be embarrassing. <laughs> right. Oh, it's so nice. It's quite heavy though. I guess all the glass makes it quite heavy. This is like the big reveal moment. coming. It's a very slow reveal. <laughs> yes! That is nice. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I just can't wait to get all the components in it now and just get it like, press the power button. Oh, it's so nice. All right, let's do a little bit of like, peel porn. Oh, it's stuck. Bad peel porn. No, I should actually leave this on so I don't get fingerprints all over it while I'm building in it. I might leave the rest of it on. <laughs> Just <laughs> leave it until the end, baby. Wow, it is so nice. It's so clean and like the glass is slightly smoked, but it's not too overdone. So I think this is gonna be quite a bright case. Especially once I've got, I've got six fans to put in this thing. Uh, so it's gonna be pretty crazy looking. Um, it looks like it comes with uh, three fans in the front already. I think those are SP120. Yes. Um, so they are like RGB, but they're not as cool as the LL120 fans that I'm going to be putting in this. Uh, so I'm going to start off by getting the little box of goodies out the back, which is in the uh, one of the hard drive bays, which are a little bit different because you don't have like a little tower of hard drive bays. They sort of are suspended like SSDs would be suspended. Okay, it's off. I'm gonna keep the tempered glass safe in the box, I think, while I'm doing this, because I definitely don't want to break that. Right, that's one off. Okay, I'll swizzle it around. See, I've already put my hand on that one. I should have I should have left the plastic on until the end. All right, that's the box of goodies. I'm not sure what's gonna come with that. Probably some, oh, we've got some cable ties, uh, some Velcro ties. Uh, yeah, the back of this case is tempered glass. So I've got a lot of cable management to do to get this looking nice, especially as um, I'm gonna have all the fans and like the fan controller, and I'm gonna have like an RGB strip and everything in this. So. Uh, it looks like there's this little thing here that to sort of like shove cables into, but I don't know how the cable management is gonna go. But yeah, that should come in handy. And then we've got like screws for fans. Um, 
yeah, I think fan screws on there. Oh, and like motherboard standoff uh, screws, but they're already in, which is good. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna now take off the other side panel and then I'm gonna get to work putting in the fans that I'm gonna use. But I do, I'm gonna be using a, um, the 115i, uh, 360 millimeter all-in-one cool F1 Corsair, which is their new one, it's a really big one, so it's gonna sit right in the front of this case. And, and then I'm gonna be using the uh, LL120 fans on it rather than the fans that come with it, which I think are just like plain gray fans. So I think I might sort of get that ready now because when I'm doing a case that like you wanna try put the fans and everything in first because and then you're not reaching around the motherboard and uh, trying to get your fans and stuff screwed in when you've already got components in there. I mean, if you're just like upgrading fans and you've already got your PC built, you don't have to like unbuild it. Um, just to put fans in. But if you're doing it straight from scratch, you might as well make your life a bit easier, really, and save you reaching around all your <laughs> expensive components and trying to put fans in. So yeah, I'm gonna take these ones out the front, um, and then I've got two fans to put in the top, and then I've got a fan to put in the back as well. So I'll just tidy my area up. You wanna try to keep everything tidy when you're working, because it soon gets out of hand when you're building a PC. And I, I've not really built uh, that many computers, probably like five or six um, in my lifetime. I've been sort of like really interested in PCs and PCs for like four or five years now. Um, so yeah, I've not really done that many. It's basically been like a few for myself and then like a few for like uh, my other half and things. But yeah, so this is quite exciting. I've never done one that's had so much like going on at once. I sort of like upgraded on the go. I've never really just like changed all the fans, everything at once. But yeah, I'll change with these fans. All right, um, so we've got the LL120s, pack of three, LL120s, another pack of three. And then I've got the Corsair Commander Pro because you need this for the new um, LL120 fans. They need a different controller because this case comes with the SP120s and the um, it does come with the fan controller, but it doesn't work with these fans. So you need the Commander Pro. Um, and then I've got some RGB lighting strips as well to go in. So uh, there's four RGB lighting strips. I'll see how long they are. I don't know how many we're gonna be able to fit. Maybe one up each side, but I'm not sure if the cables will get out of hand, but I'll, um, I'll give it a go anyway. Let's start by unboxing them. Just, I've just thrown it. This thing's big. I'm gonna have such a hard time like cable managing it so it looks nice. But it's um, it's got space for my six fans. It's got space for two LED strips. Um, and then space for like uh, temperature <laughs> thermometers. Um, and then space for USB. I'm assuming that's probably what's gonna be controlling the fans with USB headers. So manual. Oh, and then we've got lots of cables. I might have to read instructions as I go along because obviously like I've done stuff before, but I haven't used this before. I haven't used these fans before. So I'm probably gonna be like reading booklets as I go along. Um, I mostly know what I'm doing, mostly. Um, right, let's open this up. box of cables and manuals. Oh my God, I'm getting overwhelmed already by this and I'm just doing the fans. Okay. Uh, they each come very nicely packaged. They've got these little like yellow boxes to protect them. They feel pretty heavy. These feel nice. I, I know they are quite expensive though. So, I mean, they should feel nice. Um, Right, I'm gonna not get carried away and I think I'm gonna start off by just getting rid of everything that's in the case right now that we don't need. Uh, so 
I'm gonna unplug the fans that are plugged into the fan controller already. This is the fan control we don't need. Uh, this is, yeah, this is the fan control we don't need. This is the fan hub we don't need. So I need to try get all of this out. Um, yeah, let's give it a go. Everything has come so nicely like uh, cable managed down and I'm just ripping it apart right now. I've taken off the little tube thing uh, that covers all the cables just so I can get these fans out. Um, and it's obviously like Velcroed and stuff, but I'm, I'm just ripping it apart. <sighs> Which I don't really want to do, but I need to get them out. Okay, so there's um, some fan controls like on the top of the case uh, that allow for like lighting and like speed and effect, which is for the SP120 fans that are in here. That's the SP120 controller. So I've just disconnected uh, the connectors for that. And as far as I know, this is just sort of like double-sided taped on. So you just kind of pull it off. Um, I'm gonna use like, a flathead screwdriver. I'm really worried about like marking the paint that's underneath. But if I leave these in here, it's just gonna leave me less space to cable manage. <laughs> I don't know what tape they've used, <laughs> but oh my God. Ah, that one came off. And no sticky residue, which is good. Um, this one is a little bit smaller, so it's harder to like pry away. Oh my God, I've scratched it. The controller, not the case. I'm so worried I'm gonna break something. I hate like anything that's semi-delicate, but you have to apply force to it. Oh. Does not sound happy. Come on. Yay! <laughs> it came off. Okay, that's good. And that one didn't leave anything sticky. That's really good. I was like worried there was gonna be horrific, sticky residue left behind. Oh, this cable tie is really small. I have like the worst scissors for doing this. I might try to find some better ones. Yes, I need better scissors. I need better scissors. I have equipped better scissors. Um, probably the best thing to use this would be like a wire cutter, but I don't have one. Um, so I'm just gonna use scissors, like children's scissors. They're smaller, so I'm hoping I can get in there. Yes, right, I got it. Okay, once again, going with the thing of keeping everything tidy, I'm gonna get rid of this. Oh my God, it's so sticky. <laughs> and cable ties and there's ties everywhere. I'm just gonna chuck them in the box. Okay, so the old uh, fan controller is off. Um, we've got some more space here to put the new fan controller in, uh, which is giant. So hopefully I'm gonna find a good spot for it. Um, I guess maybe it could fit there. I might take one of the hard drive bays for it. 
Yeah, I'm not sure like if the cables from the fans at the top. I think I'll leave that to like the fans are in and I can try figure out a way to get it in a good place. But let's move that to one side because I'm going to take off the fans that are in it at the moment. And what's really cool um, that I noticed about this case is that this like front bit where the three fans are on, you can remove that part of the case to put the fans on, uh, which is gonna be really, really helpful because I'm putting a all in one in here. So rather than sort of like having to awkwardly reach around and get all those like screws and everything in place, I can just take it out of the case and put it on. So that's gonna be really, really helpful. I've just got to feed all those cables through. Victory. Right, um, so I need to get the all-in-one basically onto this uh, front piece here and then put it back in the case. Uh, that's the way it was, that way, that way. I don't remember. <laughs> and put it back in the case. So yeah, take these SP120 fans off. They all have loads and loads of cables on them. Um, but I think I'm gonna start off by putting the fans in the top and in the back, just so we can sort of like warm up to this. <laughs> Looks like they each come with uh, two cables. So there's like the fan header and I'm guessing that's some like power for the RGBs or like to control the RGB lighting in each one of these fans. Um, and then I'm just gonna get this one up on the back here and then I'm gonna get them up on the top. So I'm basically gonna have like the front is gonna be pulling the air in and then I'm gonna have it so the fan is pushing out the back and pushing out the top. And even though this is like tempered glass, it looks like it has quite a good gap across the top, so hopefully this case should have quite good airflow. It's gonna have plenty of fans in anyway. Um, right, that's, I'm looking currently for some screws to attach the fans. This is where I was like, keep your, keep your desk organized. Keep everything organized. Oh, I don't know if they actually come with them. If that, I've like misplaced them already. The fan controller comes with screws. Oh, that's some more fan screws. Okay, I'm like, fan screws are appearing, so I'm gonna use them. <laughs> So like when you're putting in your fan, you want to think about where your cables are and make sure that it's like the right way so the cables are in the position that you want to put them. Because if you end up putting it like this way around, then the cables would be over the wrong side of the case. And that's obviously not what you want. You want them so you can like thread them easily into the right place. So I'm going to start by putting this one in the back. So you like, when you're attaching fans, you wanna um, make sure that you don't tighten the screws up all of the way. Just sort of get them in partially first uh, and make sure it's all sort of lined up and straight and then you can tighten them up the whole way. Uh, and it just means that you can get it in the right place then you haven't like committed to tightening up. Also means you're not gonna like crack it if you tighten one side up too much. Basically what a lot of computer components is basically like cross tighten. Like, don't just tighten one thing, tighten them all sort of like evenly. Okay, 
These fan screws are actually going in pretty well because I've had fans in the past and you have to put so much force uh, into the like screw to try and get the fan on. You just feel like you're gonna break it, but this is going quite well. Okay, so I've kind of got it like tightened up. I'm just making sure that it's in like a good position. Looks uh, nice and straight and everything. And then you can just like tighten them all up. Okay, so our first fan is in. It's looking pretty good. Um, maybe I should have put it up higher a little bit. It might have looked better, but I'm pretty happy with that for now. So we're now gonna put uh, the two fans in the top. So with these ones, I'm gonna take the uh, temper glass off the top, just so I can get the screws on. Whoa, those are some long screws. Well, safe in the case. And then I've got dust filler to take off as well. That's good, that's nice and easy to get to, really big. So I make sure the cable is lined up, like where I wanna uh, cable manage it. Ooh. And then just remember, don't do the screws up all the way yet. Okay, so I've got the fan so I can sort of like move it around if I need to. I'm gonna get the Second fan in. There's just so many cables. I'm gonna be in so much trouble when it comes to cable management. I, I just, I just did what I told you not to do. I just, I put the, the fan in the wrong place. <laughs> oh no. It's all going wrong. It, the foam's just fallen off my microphone. I don't know how I managed that. I must've just moved it, <laughs> span it around. I lined it up the first time and then I just ignored what I was doing. You obviously don't want your fan cable, like this is a window case, you want the fan cables to get them as neat as you possibly can. You don't wanna be trying to uh, cable manage them when they're like f coming down the front of the case. So I've just got them into a, that's into a good spot now. I, I just, I gave you advice and then I instantly ignored my own advice. <laughs> I had to, Redo the fan. Luckily, I noticed before all my hardware was in. I jinxed myself earlier where I was like, oh yeah, the screws are going in really easily. <laughs> that one doesn't want to go in. It's the problem with fans. They, they, don't have the threads in them already, so you're basically forcing. The screws into the hard plastic. And it's not the easiest thing to do.
Pooh, I'm, I'm getting pretty warm. <laughs> I might have to go turn my uh, central heating off in here. It's, uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting warm and tightening up screws on the case band. It just shows you really how uh, tight they are ready to get into place. Yay, they're on. Nice, okay. I'm gonna do a quick tidy up and go turn the heating off and then we'll like jump back and then I'm gonna put in the uh, front radiator. Okay, so I've zoomed you all in a little bit closer. I know you can't see my face, but it means that you can see what I'm actually doing now. And I'm gonna remove the SP120 fans off the uh, like the front of the case and I'm gonna put in the brand new H150i Pro RGB. I think I call it a 115 earlier, but it's a H150i Pro basically uh, is the name of the all-in-one core that I'm gonna be using. It's very nice. It's got three gigantic fans, plenty of cooling, it's RGB. Um, and along with it, I've actually forgotten to mention at all in this video, I've got some uh, of the white sleeving from Cable Mod. Um, I bought this so I could have a, um, make it a bit more white really, because obviously the tubes on this are like black. They're very nice black braided, but I want to go with a white theme. So I've got some uh, white Cable Mod sleeving that I'm gonna try out, see what it's like, see if it's like easy to put on um, and it should make it look a little more cleaner, go with the theme a bit better. But yeah, first of all, I'm gonna start off by uh, taking the three fans uh, off the front here. Okay, so I'll just get rid of these. I would like to point out, there's absolutely nothing wrong with those fans. It's just they don't look as cool <laughs> as the ones that I'm gonna be using. Yeah, they're, I think they're probably pretty much the same fans. I don't really know, but um, yeah, they don't have the really cool RGB lighting. So that's the reason why I'm changing them basically. Um, I'm gonna put these screws just in that box. There was like a ton of uh, fan screws. We'll get this open. I'll get the, the trusty big scissors out. Oh. oh, this is exciting. I've never fitted a cooler this big before. I've got like a, a 240 in my case at the moment, like an all-in-one, but it's very really exciting. Corsair brought out such a big radiator. I'll have to see like how good it is. But yeah, we've got the instructions. I might actually sort of like be looking at this because um, every cooler is slightly different. So whatever uh, cooling I'm using. Obviously I'm not using an all-in-one if you're using uh, like an air cooler. Just basically like follow the instructions because everyone is probably gonna be like slightly different even though they look similar. Oh my god. <laughs> There's too many like mounting screws. There's the different brackets. So one will be like for Intel, one will be for like AMD um, as well. So uh, I've got that. We've got the fans that come with it, so obviously we're not gonna be needing those, so I'm just gonna put those to one side. This is the main event, so the like head that's gonna go onto the CPU, and it comes with like, it's got uh, thermal paste already on it. So I'm gonna leave the plastic cover on. I'm just basically getting the case as ready I can get it before I put the hardware in, because, um, if I was just using like an air cooler, then obviously you would sort of do that when you're doing the motherboard, but I wanna get the radiator in so it's out of the way when I've got the hardware in there. Right, so the first step, I'm gonna actually put on this sleeving from Cable Mod. Hopefully, oh my God, what if it's the wrong length? Oh no, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> it like it was gonna be too short then, but um, it seems to be okay. Tool free installation. Yeah. Bottom of the box. Okay, yeah, so it comes with these little like plastic clips. There's no other, oh, there's the instructions. <laughs> there's no other instructions, but there are some. Uh... 
Well, the braiding on the um, cable is actually much nicer than this one from Cable One. It's really soft. The Cable One one is sort of like a um, plasticky. Oh, and the one I was recommended from Cable One to get was the one that says it's for the EVG and NZXT Kraken. Um, so like not the core circle. I don't know why, I just asked them. I was like, oh, because it didn't mention it on the list of the core circle coolers, uh, the other sex. I think they do two different ones. But uh, this is the one they said to get. So that's the one that I got. Okay, it's on. One is done, pretty much. Does say there's meant to be a little like gap. I don't know if you can see it. There's like a little gap at the top, so the plastic clips are going on. But um, it looks pretty neat. It should look good. Just want this uh, bill to be as white as possible. Really, I just really love uh, white computer components. Be nice if Corsair would bring out a white all-in-one cooler. Like, how nice would that be? I've got one at the moment, but it's not from like Corsair. Obviously, this is like a Corsair build, so I'm using one of their coolers. But it would be it would be nice if they could. They brought out white everything else, so we can hope for a cooler. Yay! That looks good. It looks pretty good. I'm pretty impressed by that. I'm trying to think how much it was so I can like tell you. I'll, I'll like put uh, what's in this build, like a full list of specifications, probably like at the start of the video or something and like pricing, uh, just so you sort of know how much it is. I think it was, it was under 20 pounds. I mean, it doesn't do anything. It's purely aesthetic. Like you don't, don't need to have it, but like, I think it's pretty cool. I saw it and I was like, I need it for this build. I'm probably making this so much harder than it actually needs to be, but I don't know. Maybe the sleeve might need trimming a little bit. Okay, I think that's better. I think the, um, the cable one sleeve might be a little bit too long though. Okay, that one's on there, it's never coming off. <laughs> I'm gonna trim, I should probably have trimmed this, before, like check the length properly before I started putting it together. I think it's just like a little bit too long. I'm gonna do like the uh, measure twice, cut once sort of deal. I don't wanna. I don't want to then go the other way and it ends up being too short. I think that's better. Let's see how that works now. Obviously this uh, sleeve isn't for this cooler. It's like the NZXT one. So I'm guessing that's why it's probably like a little bit too long. Yeah, that's still too long. I can actually check to see if you could cut this. Hopefully it's just not all gonna like fall to pieces now. I've just sliced it apart. It's sort of fraying. Hopefully the clip will just hold it together. Oh God. There's bits of sleeve everywhere. Okay, I think it's on. Oh, I've got like a little bit of it stuck in the, the clip, but it looks a bit rough. I will admit that. And I'm covered in like white fluff stuff. Luckily that end is like 
the end that's on the cooler so <laughs> you can't see it like as much as if it was at the CPU end that's like right in the middle of the build. So I, yeah, it's not so bad. I'm gonna take this one off like, to cut it. But you can tell the ends, they've like, uh, I don't know what you call it, they've like melted them so it doesn't fray. But obviously I'm cutting it. So it's sort of like fraying everywhere. I can't believe I thought this was gonna be easy. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, it's all free installation. I don't think it was Cable One's fault. It's just, um, obviously I bought sleeves for um, a cooler that isn't like the official one. So they're just a bit longer. It doesn't actually look that bad. It doesn't look bad. The end that, that matters doesn't look bad anyway. <laughs> there's there's literally like white fluff everywhere. Everywhere. I'm half to hoover. <laughs> I've never had a hoover after I've built a PVC before. Okay, it needs more cutting off. I thought we were, I thought we were done by the cutting, but it does it does need some more cutting off. I've just like wrecked these cables, uh, well cable sleeves. Honestly, <laughs> I, I hope this is worth the effort and this looks really good, but this is just a pain now. Come on. Because I've like had to cut the cable, it's just frayed and it's, oh, ooh, maybe. It's on, it's finally on. I don't know how long that took. I'm probably like fast forward it. But yeah, the um, the cable on sleeving is now on. There is fluff everywhere. I'm probably gonna have to hoover. Um, but I mean, it does look pretty good. It's a little bit rough on the end that I had to cut. But the uh, tubes are now white. So I'm gonna start off by reading the instructions because we're gonna have to use some like really long screws to get through the uh, front panel into the fans and then into the radiator because that's how fans are attached onto the radiator. So yes, a little, <laughs> little bit of manual work. So 24 long fan screws. Oh my God, that's gonna be a lot of screwing. Uh, it tells you to put the back plate on first, but I'm gonna put the back plate on obviously like when it's in place. Uh, the CPU is in place. I want to just get the radiator on first. So install the fans and the radiator. So it's sort of showing you like how to attach it if you were doing it from like putting in the top of the case. So you'd have the fans on like this uh, side, but I want to do it like through the front of the case. So we're going to be using like the, um, the long fan screws. Uh, da, da, da. I'm just checking to see. I think, yeah, that's basically all the instructions that we get. See, that's mounting stuff. I just want the fan screws for now.
I'm gonna get out my nice LL120s, the three others that are gonna go in the front. I nearly lost it then. I nearly dropped it. Ooh. All right, so there's a little bit of figuring out to do. So you wanna make sure that uh, this is the top of the case, this is the bottom of the case. Uh, and I wanna make sure that my fans are like aligned properly so that the cables are like rootable basically. Uh, I think I'm gonna do this one like a little bit further down maybe. I'm just trying to like figure it out, it's quite hard. Yeah, cause there's like a hole for the cables to go through just there. So I want this fan to point this way down. If you don't use an all-in-one cooler in your case or um, if you don't change the fans around the case, you can basically skip this part. Like, this is quite a long step when it comes to building it, like just changing the fans around it just takes time. Uh, the actual like putting the CPU motherboard and stuff in the case isn't that time consuming really in comparison to this anyway. Okay, so I'm just placing the fans onto the like actual radiator itself now and the best way I found to sort of do it is to put the radiator flat on the table with the tubes just sort of like hanging over the edge here. And then I've made sure that I've got the tubes at what's gonna be the top of the um, the fan. So we've got the, the top's basically gonna be here, which is where the tubes are. And then it's gonna sort of go into the case that way. So took a little bit of figuring out. I just gotta try and line up all of these fans with the holes on the radiator. It's gonna be a little bit awkward to do. Okay, it looks like everything line is lined up, so I'm gonna go ahead and screw everything in. And also when you're um, putting fans onto a radiator, don't do it too tight. Like you wanna do it tight enough that it's gonna hold in place, but you don't wanna tighten it so much that you're actually gonna like damage the radiator because obviously there's like liquid in there. Um, and if you go too far, you can sort of like uh, damage the, like make holes or like crack the radiator or whatever. And of course that means it's gonna leak. So you wanna make sure they're on there and they're, they're tight, but you don't wanna over tighten. Okay, making sure I've definitely got all of the screws. So that's now ready to go into the case. Yeah, I'll make sure I got all the cables and everything out of the way. So I can give you guys Good shot of me trying to get it in there. I think I'm actually gonna have to undo the little um, ties that are on the fans because it's sort of getting going right up against that wall and I want to make sure that I can actually get to them once I've got it in place. So I'm going to undo them now. So I've got the all-in-one cooler in now. Uh, all the fans are attached that I want to add onto this case. So I think the next step for me to take is to basically hook up the uh, Commander Pro, which is going to be what controls the fans and like the LED strips. Um, or maybe I might put in the LED strips first actually, and then I can sort of see how long the cables are going to be and like where I can route them. Uh -huh. Look, connecting LED straps. Oh, 
This case is gonna have so much lighting, it's gonna be crazy. Um, they're really nice actually, because you can connect them into each other, uh, which is definitely a good thing. Uh, and then this. And we've got some extenders, so like the connector, um, connect onto the end of the LED straps. But I'm just so worried about the cable management in this case. Thankfully, like even though the back panel is tempered glass, um, for my particular setup, it actually goes up against the wall. <laughs> so I won't, like no one's really gonna see it that much. Um, but yeah, I think it's gonna be really difficult, I think, to get the cables looking nice. Like even if uh, this case wasn't like tempered glass, like, I, I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna do, to be honest. Um, right, anyway. Stop going over that. Let's get these. Uh, they are adhesive. Um, I know some companies do like magnetic LED struts now. At least I think these are adhesive, which I quite like. Like the idea of having magnetic ones. But I mean, adhesive should be fine. I mean, it should work. Hopefully, it's going to work. <laughs> I'm sort of planning maybe where to put them. There's just too many cables going on. There's just too many cables. Do one across the bottom, I think. I, I guess there's like one for every side, really. We go like all the way around. I think they'll fit in there. Yes. So it's like been designed to get all the like LED straps in, I think. Yeah, the way the side panel's like, yeah, I'll go in. I was thinking like normal cases, you have like the screws in the back to screw the side panel in. So you can't put like LED straps down the side, but because the side panel like sticks onto the front where it's like tempered glass. It should work. Hopefully these are really sticky. Just like the um the other fan control I had to rip off. That was so sticky. So hopefully this is these are also gonna be really sticky. Oh, maybe they are magnetic. They are. They're like both. I think. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely got magnetics in it. <laughs> I've just, I just started thinking about cable management again. Which side would be easier to like root a yeah, I think that side, because then I can go up through uh, like the CPU slot. Well, that went very smoothly. I'm really happy with those LED strips. Because I've had so many before where they just like would not stay put. They just like end up peeling off and like flopping down. But they, I think you can tell that like made for this case because everywhere is like a perfect width to like fit an LED strip in neatly. And like the fact they connect together is just great as well because you haven't got like two, like all these cables going everywhere. You just need like one to power the whole strip. So I'm, I'm really happy with those. That went really, really smoothly. Um, probably the, the smoothest thing so far that I've done on this build. Uh, so we've got the extender cable, which I'm gonna need obviously to reach um, back through. I think you can connect these into each other as well. That's good. I think I'm gonna have to do, yeah, we'll do like double it up. Yeah, I'm really glad uh, how easy that was um, to get those LED strips in. That definitely makes life easier. Okay, so I'm just gonna undo some of the cables for these fans so I can just sort of start getting all the fans and everything into place. This, this case is honestly gonna be like complete hell. <laughs> to cable manage. Oh dear. If it if it wasn't uh tempered glass, like normally my normal technique to cable management is cable tight everything until the like you can get the side panel back on basically. Um yeah, I'm not 
I'm not one that, like, someone that f faffs around with cable management too much. I mean, I like it to look neat in the front, like, it's got to look good. Um, but the, behind the side panel, it's often a, a little bit of a mess. I, I do cable tie it, like, I try and make it neat, but it's never, like, I know, like, show quality. <laughs> it's not something I would, like, want other people to see. Whereas with this case, I don't have the chance to hide anything, so I'm going to have to be really careful. Um, oh, there's a nice little slot at the top here that I can get some fan, fan cable through for the top fan. I'm liking this case so far though, it's like, it seems like it's been built to make building in it pretty easy. Um, all the side panels came off really easily. I like the thing at the front where you can just screw it off to get like the cooler on and get the fans on. Okay, so I need to get these cables uh, from the cooler. There's sort of a hole around the side. I need to try get them through. That's the jungle of cables through for the cooler. I'm gonna turn it around just so you can like see what on earth I am dealing with right now. <laughs> there are so many, <laughs> so many fan cables. Okay, um, I've got the command center pro that I need to try and find a home for. I think I might take out one of these hard drive bays and put it in there. Seems like quite a good spot for it because just think there hasn't got much space. Or maybe I could take out an SSD. No, because I've actually, no, I've got one, no, I've got two SSDs in my current PC and a one hard drive. Um, and then I've got an M.2 to put in as well, which is su uh, supplied by Corsair. So I can, I think I'll actually take out one of these hard drive bays because I'm not going to need it. Like if I do buy, um, new hard drives in the future, they're all going to be SSDs now, I think. Um, or maybe I might buy, like, swap out, wait, it's only a one terabyte hard drive, so I might swap it out in the future, for, like a bigger one maybe, just for, like, storage. But if you've got anything that you frequently use, you want it on an SSD, really. Okay, that was pretty easy to take out. I think there's a good spot. I'm wondering what I should put it in the top, like what would be better for cables. <laughs> hmm. I think the top, I'm gonna go with the top. I'm gonna go with the top. Cause these are all sort of, rather than going like down and round, it'd be easier just to like root them across the top there. It might help make it look a little bit neater. I'm just gonna move this one down. I will get hardware on this thing eventually. <laughs> like normally a PC build was like, oh, here's the case. And that's basically it. But this case has, cause I'm just doing so much with the fans and the RGB struts and like the all-in-one cooler. There's just, it's quite a long process on the, on the case, right. So we've got those super sticky, double-sided. Now I've got to decide which way around this is gonna go. I think this way. Yeah, I'm gonna go. It's hard to like, I don't wanna regret it later on. Like right now I can't really picture it cause there's just so many cables and things going on. I just don't want to end up regretting it. Be like, oh, I wish I'd put it around the other way. Okay, 
It's a bit awkward actually because the way, like where I want it to sit is sort of where the, the almost like slots are to put the hard drive in. So it's, I don't know if it's gonna reach. Now it's got, a, it's like sort of foamy. So I'll try it. We'll see if that works. That's good. I'm not gonna be using the moment of things I don't think anyway, like the temperature readers, it does come with them, they're like in the box. So I just don't think, I don't know, I don't want them sort of stuck all over different parts of my PC. I think it might look a bit funny. I might use one maybe for like the hard drive, but I mean, they don't really get hot anyway. Okay, so that's definitely on there. Now we're gonna get to work plugging these fans. Okay, it took me a minute to just like work everything out with the fans because it was a bit more complicated than I thought it was gonna be. I need to use this uh, little like uh, RGB controller which comes with in the box of the LL120 fans with this Command Center Pro in order to like basically control the fans, um, but I've also got to work out the which ones are which on the numbers. I should have like labeled them because basically you want the RGB lighting to go from like front to back. Um, and I've just sort of like shoved all the cables through and I don't know which one is which. Uh, so I'm gonna have to work that out. But first I'm just gonna connect. Um, this is what the, so the fans plug into this and then their like LED part of the fans plugs into this, which then plugs into this so it's a little bit um long-winded but hopefully everything's going to work out in the end i think i can sit that maybe under there i'm just trying to figure it all out so it's gonna not be like a complete mess anyway right so i think my next step is probably gonna try I don't know if I can even work this out, like which fan is which from this massive jumble of cables. I should have labeled them or something before I um, shove them all through in a random order. I got everything labeled out. I just used some like sticky notes to sort of let me know which ones are which. Um, I got everything like labeled up. I got them all plugged into what I hope is the right slots. Uh, I'm just going to plug in the LED strip now. So you basically how it works, you've got like the, this is the like RGB hub for all the fans that are plugged into and then that plugs into the like Commander Pro um, and then the Commander Pro is what plugs into your motherboard uh, via like a USB so and then you use the Corsair Link software to control all of the fans. <laughs> so I mean it, it does make sense it's just there's like so many cables and things going on um, just for all the different fans. I literally don't know what I'm going to do um, and then it gets its power um, there's a power save to power here for uh, the f like fan hub and then there's a save to power for like the RGB hub. Um, and the RGB hub connects by like one of the like LED slits, uh, connectors. So I've got one for the like strips and then I've got one for like the fans basically. And hopefully like in the Corsair Link software, it just detects everything um, and it just works like magic. But we'll see how well that goes like when I've got all the hardware in. So now it's very exciting because it's finally time to put like proper hardware in this case. I've got you all in zoomed like nice and close now so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Uh, so I've got this motherboard here from Asus. It's the uh, Prime Z270A. It's got like Aurora Sync. I think it's got a little bit like lighting and stuff on it. Um, and it's an LG LGA1151 socket because I'm going to be using an i7 7700K processor which is in this little box here. It's come out of another build so that's why it's around like uh, yeah it's come out of another build so that's why it's in a bit of like a, a strange box anyway but yeah um just open up obviously the motherboard's like white it goes with a theme that I wanted so yeah I asked Asus like please can it be white um so they've sent me a nice white motherboard over I'm 
going to build on top of the, the box. bags for one side. Very nice. See, so you guys can see it. I'm going to turn it so it's like my way up so I can see exactly what I'm doing. But I mean, you should be able to sort of get the idea. Hopefully you'll like learn something. It's, it's just to sort of show people like it's not as hard as you think it is. I mean, if I can build a PC, I've built like five or six now. Um, I think, I think anyone can do it because I'm not the most, um, I don't know, practical when it comes to certain stuff. But yeah, let's, uh, so the first step is we're gonna put the CPU in. So I said I've got the i7 7700K, uh, it's an Intel processor. So that means they're on the motherboard. The pins are on the motherboard, not on the CPU, whereas with AMD, last time I did an AMD build anyway, um, the pins are on the um, processor and not on the motherboard. So the first step is to like um, pull out the little arm. Oh, <laughs> she says. Um, and then you basically lift the little flap up and you leave the cover on um, and it's sort of like, I don't know what it does, but you leave it on basically when you put the processor in, it'll just sort of like pop out when you pop the processor in. And then um, on a, like on the CPU, you'll see there's like a little gold, oh God, oh God, <laughs> be careful. Um, there's a little gold triangle like in the bottom corner and you basically wanna line that up with the little triangle that you'll have on the motherboard. Um, and I think there is one on the cover as well. Yeah, it's even bigger like on the cover. So you basically wanna line that up and that's how you know you've got the processor in like the right way round basically. Um, and yeah, yeah, that's, probably the most important thing to check. Apart from that, it's just sort of be careful, pick it up carefully. I always find this bit is probably the scariest. This like playing around the motherboard, like putting the RAM and putting the CPU in is probably like the scariest for me. Um, don't drop it, don't push it, just sort of gently place it into its little slot. I mean, if it doesn't go in first time, just pick it up, put it down again. You just want to be really careful because you don't want to damage any of those pins. You don't want to damage the processor. Um, it will find its home. If it doesn't go in, just pick it up and like place it down. Don't push it or like just don't put any force on it basically. You want to be careful. Um, so yeah, basically place it in place and you put the cover down. Um, you sort of like lock it into place. So you want to make sure the little uh, like flaps are underneath the screw. And then you've got the arm, you just wanna fold down the arm. So you'll start to feel quite a bit of resistance. And like, this is scary. Cause you don't wanna put force on it. Like it's, it's, it's scary, but you have to put force on it in order to get it in place. Cause you wanna get the arm back down where it was at the start. But it, it has a resistance because the pins on the motherboard, you're basically like pushing them into the processor. Um, and therefore it like causes resistance, but it is it is scary and like you do feel like you're gonna break it And this thing like normally pops out as well. But yeah, you just push it down. There we go. It pops out And you clip the little arm in place and that's it and your process is in place then and then yeah, it's it's safe <laughs> And it's in um, the next step is I'm gonna put in the RAM so I've got some really really sexy RAM. So I'll hold it. I keep forgetting that it's like way more forward on the camera. Um, yeah, I've got some really, really sexy RAM from Corsair, Corsair Vengeance. I've got 32 gigs. I've never had so much RAM on my PC. I've currently got 16 in there, but um, it's gonna be great. I like I'm video editing and stuff now, so I feel like I need it. I need like a really good CPU. Um, yeah, so 32, uh, 100 megahertz of the like really sexy Corsair Vengeance RAM. So let's open it up. It looks so nice. So I opened it like off camera again. That is nice. I don't know, why do I love like white computer components so much? It's weird, but. I can't believe the price of like DDR4 at the moment now. Hey, it's just, it's crazy prices. And graphics cards, just everything. The now is not a good time to really build a new PC. Hopefully stuff will start going down in price, but it's just, it's sad really, because 
not everyone can like enjoy building their own PC. There's not such thing as like really having a budget PC anymore. So I'm gonna be using all the RAM slots because I've got four lots of RAM. So you pull back the little clips that are like on the motherboard like I just did. Um, and then you basically get the RAM and you make sure that it's lined up. I've actually got mine like upside down, I think. Yeah, I have. <laughs> so you make sure the like two little slots line up with the slots on the motherboard. Like one is longer than the other. Um, and you basically just push it into place. And obviously make sure you're using the right RAM. Don't use DDR3 RAM in like a newer motherboard, you'll need DDR4 RAM, which is like a different slot. Uh, so, I mean, it it wouldn't go in, like you'd have to force it, but just double check to make sure you've, you're buying the right RAM for your build as well. Okay, so, um, I always find it's a bit nerve wracking. You have to try to get it in like as straight as you can and give it like an even push across all of it. And then once it's like in place, then you can just push and it should just clip. I hate doing this, I hate it. There we go. Like you'll know once it's in because it clicks at you, but it's just the, I think it requires force around computer components, just sort of scares me slightly. So do the same thing again. So we'll just make sure that it's lined up, make sure the clip's back, and then you just like carefully place it in evenly as you can. Make sure it's in place, you don't wanna push like one side down before like the other one's lace, you wanna push it down evenly and then slot it in. It's very satisfying though. <laughs> like even though it requires a little bit of force, it's a bit scary, it's still satisfying. I, I can't wait to see this build, it's looking so nice already. Okay, there we go. All right, all the RAM is in, it's looking so nice. Right, the next step is gonna to be to put in the M.2 uh, SSD. This is gonna be my first time using M.2 SSD. Um, yeah, I've just got like a normal SSD at the moment. Yeah, so I need a, a screw, so I should have looked in the motherboard box before I start this. That was silly. I just thought it would probably be already on the motherboard, but I guess I was wrong. This is a learning curve for me with it's just an M.2. I probably should have like looked this up <laughs> before I started. Hopefully the motherboard manual is gonna tell me what I'm doing. Okay, here we go. Yes, I definitely should have looked um, how to install an M.2 drive. But we can learn together. We can learn together. This is why I say it's like a, it's, it's like a tutorial, but I'm, I'm learning at the same time. Okay, God, this is... It's so small and light. How do they just get so much like speed and size and stuff now? Like, oh, it's crazy. How am I so amazed by technology? Wait. Okay, I think that definitely needs those little standoffs. Okay, it's in, it's in. That was probably like the fiddliest thing on earth. I'm hoping I've got a screwdriver that's small enough to put this in. I'm assuming this is what these are for. Yeah, it must be. I've got like a, a mini screwdriver. I don't know if you guys can see it. Like a mini screwdriver. I need like the smallest. Smallest little crosshead ever. This one's like magnetic as well, which is really good. Yeah, I'm now equipped with a tiny, tiny screwdriver to get this into place. Oh, that wasn't bad. 
I think the small screw is gonna be the horrific thing. Thank God I've got like a magnetic screwdriver to try to get this into place. That wasn't scary at all. Nice. Okay, well that's our motherboard uh, ready. Just need to like put it in the PC now. So I'm gonna put the case on its back um, and then we basically just uh, put the motherboard in. If you, just to um, check as well, make sure that your case has the motherboard standoffs already in place. Um, mine does. I think most cases do come with the motherboard standoffs in place. I'll show you like what I mean as well when I'm doing it. But yeah, well, um, the motherboard is basically ready to go in the PC now. Woo! Now we finished up with the motherboard, I'm actually going to get the power supply into the case first before I put the motherboard in. Uh, so I've got the really, really nice white RM750X power supply um, and it also comes, the best thing about it, it comes with white braided cable. So it's going to look perfect in my white themed build. Let's just get it opened up. That's our like kettle lead. We've got some cable ties. Oh, there's a really nice little uh, metal like powered by Corsair badge. We've got a bag with, oh, oh, the cables are so nice. They are really nice, like braided white cables. So that's gonna definitely help it look a little bit better. And the lovely white power supply itself. Comes in a really nice like little velvet, velvet bag. It's a shame, like this case obviously has like a power supply shroud. Uh, so I didn't really need like a white power supply, but I wanted it because it has the white braided cables. Um, but I mean, if you didn't have a power supply shroud in your belt, like this power supply would just look like fantastic. It just looks so nice. Okay, and then you've also got the, uh, it comes with the screws that I'm gonna need to put the power supply into the back of the case. So I'm gonna do my power supply with the fan facing downwards. Um, I think that's probably the best idea, especially if you've got like a power supply shroud. Um, on this particular shroud, it does have like a vent in the top, but I just feel like the power supply is then getting like fed cold air from outside of the case, uh, rather than pulling in like air that's already warm for where your graphics card and stuff is. So for me, it just makes more sense to have the fan on the bottom. Um, and then it's just got a stick on the back. Oh, it just it's just letting you know that the fan isn't always gonna spin. Um, <laughs> because it's got like a silent mode. So if it's not using that much power, it'll just be quiet, which is good. So in this particular case, um, the power supply goes in from the back. Uh, some cases you have to like remove the power supply shroud and put it in from the front. So I'm gonna put the power supply in from the bottom, but first I'm actually gonna plug in all the cables. So modular power supply. So I need to work out what cables I'm gonna use. So we've got a PCIe cable. Um, and it's eight pin PCIe cable. I'm just gonna check what this graphics card I'm using. I've got the RX 580. I'm just gonna check what uh, how many PCIe um, connectors it requires, if it's gonna tell me anywhere on the box. All right, so. That end's gonna get into the power supply. So this is the 24 pin cable, which you're obviously gonna need, um, cause that's what's gonna power your motherboard. So every like PC is gonna require the 24 pin. Looking for the power for the CPU now. Yes, that's what this is. Not sure why they've got like the um, 
trying to think what it's called. It's like shrink wrap plastic, like on the cables. That doesn't look that great to me. I'm sure there's a reason why they've done it, but I'm pretty sure on like their normal cables, it doesn't really have like that like shrink wrap plastic on it. Um, so that's my CPU power. And then Molex, um, as far as I know, nothing on this case requires Molex, it's really good. They've done everything with, uh, all the fan controls are powered by SATA. So that's really good, useful. And we do got two SATA powers. So I think we need one for that, two. Um, then we've got three because we've got some, uh, the PSU shard lights up, so it needs three, and then I haven't got any hard drives in at the moment, but I will need three more, so I'm gonna need six eventually. And each one of these gives four. I think I might, I'll just put in the ones that I need for now, and then when I put in my other hard drives, um, I'll probably, I'll put the other one in then, because there's plenty of space to be able to get the power supply still, so it shouldn't be any problems with me putting it in the later date. Okay, so that's all the cables we need and the power supply. I'll try and keep everything nice and tidy. It's just so easy for it to start getting out of hand. <laughs> uh, we don't need that at the moment. And we will need this because it's got the uh, screws in that we need to put the power supply in. Okay, so that's the power supply in place. Basically means that when I've got this, um, the case on its back and I've got the motherboard in, I can sort of get ready and plug in all of the different cables. But I'm just gonna um, try and thread them through just so I can like tip the case on its back. I've got the case on its back now, and I'm just gonna basically put the motherboard in. Um, the first step, and the one that's really, really easy to actually forget about, is the IO shield. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in first. Make sure that it's the right way up, and the spongy side goes against like the motherboard. Okay, so all the motherboard standoffs are in. They're these little uh, things on here, and you want to make sure they're in the right place for whatever size motherboard you're using. So I'm using a ATX motherboard, and they're already in the ATX uh, position. So I don't need to like move, put any extras in or move them around. They're already sort of inserted in the right place. Um, and then it's just a case of carefully placing the motherboard in. Um, it's a little bit awkward because you sort of have to push against the IO shield and sort of get it to slot in. Um, when it does go in, you, you know it's in, but it's it's just a little bit um, delicate. But You know what? I don't think there's actually enough clearance with this fan in the back to be able to get the motherboard in. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think the motherboard's gonna fit in with that back fan in there, so I'm gonna have to take the back fan out in order to get the motherboard in. So I've removed that uh, rear fan, so hopefully the motherboard is just gonna slide straight on in there now without any issues.
Okay, we are in. It will just like, it just doesn't want to go and then it will just get in place and it will just like slot into place. I find the easiest thing to do is like make sure the center one is lined up, like the little standoff that sticks up through the middle of the motherboard. And then once, you know, that's into place, it sort of holds it there and then you can get like all the screws and everything in. Okay, so I've got the motherboard into place now. I've seen the camera in a little bit closer, so you can take like, a closer look at what I've done. So I put the IO shield into place at the back here, and then you sort of place the motherboard into the case um, and line up all the standoffs. The main one you wanna line up is like the one in the middle, uh, is the one that like sticks up through the motherboard, because once you know that one's lined up, you know all the others that you have to screw screws into are lined up. Uh, and then I screwed a screw into each of uh, where the holes are in the motherboard into the standoffs. And that's basically the motherboard in, the RAM's in, CPU's in, um, the M.2 SSD is in. The next step, I'm gonna connect up the uh, 24 pin, the eight pin power, and then I'm gonna attach the uh, all-in-one cooler onto the CPU. So the 24 pin is just on the right side of the motherboard. There we go. <laughs> you wanna make sure it's definitely in place. Make sure you push it nice and hard so you sort of get that like satisfying click. Um, and then the eight pin, which is what powers the uh, processor, that's right at the top left-hand corner of the motherboard. Nice satisfying click. And then you've got all the uh, like front panel connectors that are down the bottom here. So, you can use uh, this little like adapter that will come with your motherboard. And this is what I use because it's basically, everything's labeled on it and it's just the easiest way to make sure you get everything basically in the, in the right place. So you've got the USB three, which I can put in first. Oh, that's for, um, we've got a bit of a random connect here. That connects to the little, uh, powers the LED that's at the front of the case. So I'll connect that one. This is the HD audio, which will go down here. And then we've got all the sort of little fiddly ones that I, we can plug into this one. Okay, there we go, that's everything plugged in for now. And then of course I'll plug in the graphics card a bit later on. I'm gonna flip the case back over um, just so we can put on the CPU cooler. I am back on camera and we're gonna put in the all-in-one cooler now. So basically I've got to get the mounting bracket on the back of the motherboard and then I've just got to put the bracket on the uh, CPU. So um, yeah, I've zoomed out a little bit further because I, I 
don't know, you don't really need to be that close to get the, the hang of what I'm doing. Um, but this build has been a real challenge for me. Like I definitely feel um, as though it's probably one of the longest, I don't know, it's nothing that hard, but I just feel like it's tested me mentally. <laughs> But it's, it's been fun. I just can't wait to get everything like up and running at this point. I just want to, um, I don't know, just press that power button and just see it all light up and look amazing. Um, but yeah, so let's get the bracket on at the back of the motherboard. So I've read like through the instructions a little bit um, and just to, because obviously every like all in one cooler is a little bit different. Um, I've got the mountain bracket set up for the uh, socket that I'm using, the uh, one one. 51 socket and then I've got the standoffs to screw in. I'm just going to make sure that I'm screwing them in the right direction. I think they go from the front, yeah. It wouldn't make much sense if they went in from the back really but I will check to make sure. I don't want to mess up. Oh yeah, I put the uh, rear fan back in. I checked to see if it could fit. And it can actually fit, I just couldn't get the motherboard into place with it in there. Uh, so I've probably done this build in like completely the wrong order. Um, yeah, I, I got the case ready first, but I don't know if that was the best option really. It made sense to me at the time uh, to get all the fans everything in and the cooler in. But I don't know, I think there would be enough space in this case to actually do it after the motherboard and that is in place. And it's probably caused me more problems than it's really helped me. Uh, especially like having, I like moved that back fan around because I put the cable in the wrong place and stuff. But um, yeah, it's been fun. It's been good. Hopefully you've like been enjoying the video and have learned something. Maybe. <laughs> For me, the easiest part was actually like putting the processor and RAM and stuff into the motherboard. Just a lot of the problems have come from basically where I was just replacing the fans and stuff on the case and the fan controller. I think it's all because it's quite new to me. I've never like worked with the fan controller and putting fans and stuff in like that many all at once. So I think it just, it just hurt my head a little bit. <laughs> it's I, I prefer just to get a case and then you just build in it, but. Hopefully it's gonna look really good when it's done. It's all gonna be worth it in the end. That's what I keep telling myself. All the ones are actually easier to fit than air coolers, I would say. At least when it gets to the point of like the uh, the mounting brackets at least, because I find air coolers like such a pain to try and do. Why is that moving around so much? Okay, so I've got the uh, back plate and the screws tightened up as tight as I can get them. It is a little bit wobbly. I'm just hoping that like when I put the uh, like the pump on and tighten up the thumb screws, that it's just gonna like tighten down and it's gonna fit great. But at the moment, I just don't like how much the like back plate is like moving around, but I just hope that it's still gonna fit nice and tightly onto the CPU. So um, the cooler comes with the thermal tape paste pre-attached. So I just need to take off the plastic cover. A perfect layer of thermal paste. I know some people will quite like will remove the thermal paste that comes on um, like coolers pre-installed, but I mean it's a perfect layer, so there's no reason like to remove it and put my own thermal paste on. Uh, so I'm just gonna use the thermal paste that's already on there. Uh, if you are using a cooler that doesn't have pre-applied thermal paste, then there's the dot method or the line method. I personally use the dot method just because I think it's probably, I know like less messy, it's just easier. Just put like a little like pea sized amount in the middle and it seems to work fine for me. I, well, I imagine it sort of looks like that. <laughs> like when you push it down, it just sort of squishes out. Um, but yeah, there's plenty of ways you can apply thermal paste. I don't know if it makes much difference. But yeah, it's uh, already on this one. So I'm gonna be using the thumb screws to attach on and hopefully it's gonna be nice and tight.
Okay, have faith in Corsair. The, uh, the, like, back plate doesn't move at all now. For, like, it seems to have tightened down really nicely. Now oh, I've got the, uh, like, the actual CPU block in place. I was so worried that it was going to move around, but it's now really, really tight. So, I, yeah, I thought because the, the, like, back plate was moving that the CPU block would move, but... It seems I just had to have faith in the instructions and just not panic. <laughs> but that is definitely on there. I'm just doing it up tight. Mama to cross tight in. Don't want to do it too tight, but I want to make sure that it's got good contact with the CPU. So yeah, that's the cooler on. Um I guess I better plug in these cables while I remember. <laughs> so one of these is SATA power, so I need to route that up. Just trying to think where's the best place to, how to route these cables that it's not gonna look like a complete and utter mess. This I don't, um, I guess I will have to plug the fans, the three fan fans. I plug them into the um, Command Pro, but I guess I'm probably going to end up plugging them into that controller now. Mm, I might put that through where the 24 pin is. Okay, so um, basically everything is finished. I just need to uh, change what's going on around the back here and obviously <laughs> do some cable management, but um, I'm not gonna uh, finish cable managing this off like this evening because I've been doing this build for so long now. Like obviously it wouldn't be that long in the video, but um, I think I'm gonna finish off the cable management. A bit later on but because there's just <laughs> so much going on but I just want to check that this PC boots um, so I've got a SATA power here for the pump and then I'm gonna plug so it's number fans one two and three that need to go into the uh, CPU fan controllers. Uh, we've got USB, so that needs to plug into a USB header on the motherboard. I'll thread that through. I'm trying to think where there would be a good spot. I think probably at the bottom of the motherboard is our best bet. I'm so excited to see if this boots. <laughs> it's been a long time coming. I just hope that it does. I just pray that it's gonna just be our first time. Basically, it was a complete mess. Oh, the graphics card. I need to put in the graphics card. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I completely forgot. Right, so uh, we've got the R. X580 from Asus. Uh, thank you to them for sponsoring this. They obviously sponsor the motherboard, sponsor the graphics card. So that's great because graphics cards at the moment are just crazy, crazy, crazy prices. So yeah, it's a four gigabyte uh, RX580. Hopefully it's gonna, it should be able to run. Like I've got a very beautiful 4K monitor from Philips. They've kindly sponsored um, it's 40 inch as well, so it's big. You'll see it when I've got this like build finally set up. Um, but yeah, it's a big monitor from uh, Philips. So hopefully this graphics card is gonna do a good job of uh, powering all that 4K goodness. 
So it comes in a static bag and the first thing you want to do is remove the uh, PCIe like metal covers at the back so you can get the graphics card in. I'm just trying to see how well it's going to line up. Like where it's going to line up. I think it's going to need the top two out of this case. I always end up like lining up the wrong one. Oh. So a very nice, um, it is like a black and white card. It has got like a little bit of like, it says Asus in white on it. I mean, it mo mostly is back black. Um, it hasn't got like a back plate on it or anything. Um, maybe I could get like a white black back plate. I know I've seen people with them, like you can get acrylic ones made. Uh, so it might be quite nice to get one just to sort of match the overall white theme because everything's very white at the moment There's gonna be a, like a big black graphics card sat, sat in the middle But it is so hard to get hold of graphics cards at the moment anyway, let alone like a specific one uh, But I'm really happy that I've got this one uh, It might even look good if I had like a PCIe riser because then you'd be able to see the black and white but it is um, Still a little bit too black. I mean, I, I want it to be like a fully white graphics card, but I'm I'm very happy that Aces have sent it over. Right, so if I lined up the yeah, I did. <laughs> I actually need this one. I think. Yeah, I knew that was gonna happen. I knew it. I'll put this one back in. So this whole video was supposed to be like, oh yeah, building a PC isn't as hard as you think it is. And then it's just me endlessly messing things up. <laughs> but I know, it's been fun. It's been, it's been an adventure. Hopefully you're enjoying watching it so far. But right, okay, let's get this in. Basically when you're showing a graphics card, you want to make sure the little clip on the motherboard is pushed down. Um, and then you can insert the graphics card so you put it in nice and straight it's sort of the same as if you're like lining up the RAM and making sure this uh, the Like tube for the all-in-one isn't gonna get in the way um, and then you just uh, push it into place And then it clicks and you get a very satisfying click and that's the graphics card in um, And then you just need to screw in all the little um, the two thumb screws that we just took out <laughs> the graphics card's in and then of course you have to connect the power for the graphics card so um oh i've just realized that i've got two eight pins through here i only need one of these maybe that was in the box maybe there was like another option in the power supply box to do like a cable with only one pcie connector i don't know really what i've done I just shoved that back through just so it's like neat and you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, oh, I've inadvertently also like accidentally pulled the case power LEDs out. I'll do redos in a sec. So yeah, you want to um, check how many PCIe power pins your graphics card needs. So this one is eight, so I've got the eight pin connector. Uh, I haven't got two of them anymore. I've just shoved it back through. Um, no, I do want some more cable. I always like support the graphics card a bit because I feel like I'm always putting like quite a bit of stress on it. Um, I'm just gonna see what's going on around the back because I just shoved those cables through and it's like a massive Medusa nest thing going on right now. Woo, hey. Sorted. Um, now for the moment of truth, I'm gonna plug it in. We're gonna press the power button and it's gonna turn on. <laughs> At least I hope that's what I was gonna do anyway. Um, so yeah, let's pray. Pray to the PC gods. 
it's now the moment of truth. I've got the PC plugged in, I've got it set on my new desk, I've got a new big white desk, and I've got this giant uh, 40 inch 4K monitor that's been sponsored by Philips, so a big thank you to them. And I'm just gonna see if this PC turns on, because obviously I don't wanna start cable managing it um, and then realize that it doesn't even boot into the BIOS. So uh, let's press the power button and just like all fingers crossed, it boots first time. Oh, <laughs> that looks nice. I can hear the fan spinning up. Oh, yes. <laughs> it looks like it's booted, that's so good. I think it's gonna go into the bio screen. Let's hope. Yes, <laughs> for definite. Woo, that was, <laughs> that was a bit of a challenging build. I'm so happy it's booted first time though. It's always like the big, like ultimate test, like please boot. Okay, so um, yeah, it looks great. It's really quite quiet as well. It's um, my other PC. It wasn't loud, but you could definitely hear the fans and everything. Whereas this PC now, it's sort of like quietened down. It's so, so quiet. So that's really, really nice. I think it just looks fantastic as well. The case has like all the cables like hanging out of it and like half the tempered glass side panels are missing. But I think that it looks great. Um, I just can't wait to get it finished now. I just wanted to check that it, it basically booted because I didn't want to do all that cable management. Um, I think it's going to be a real big challenge for me to cable manage. Luckily though, I've got this like wall here so even though the case is like tempered glass all the way round it means I can still sort of like hide the cables I guess up against the wall um because I don't know like I'm gonna do the best job that I can but there is so many cables around there because of all the like fans and the fan controller I think it's gonna be really quite challenging to get it to look like decent enough that it should be on show. Anyway, I want this side to look good at least. It's, it looks like a mess at the moment, let's be honest. Um, but yeah, now um, let's jump into me torturing myself with cable management and then hopefully showing you all a really beautiful looking uh, PC at the end. Hopefully you've all sort of uh, learned something up to this point um, and I hope you enjoy, <laughs> enjoy my uh, rather terrible cable management. Now that I know that the PC is up and working, I can start on the cable management. So I've got all the things next to me on the desk here that I'm gonna be using to cable manage. So I've got a few different uh, types of cable ties. I've got cable combs. Uh, I've got some Velcro ties that came with the power supply. And I've got the cable that I forgot to plug in earlier, which is for the uh, all-in-one cooler, the pump. Pump is like a USB header, so I think that's probably what controls the lighting on it. And I've got some scissors so I can clip off the cable ties. And then I've got the thing from uh, the back of the case that keeps all the cables like neat and tidy. So I'm gonna get to work on uh, sorting out all these cables that are around the back here. It's definitely a little, a little bit crazy, but I think I'm gonna sort of start off by making the front of the case look nice and threading all the cables through and uh, then I'm gonna <laughs> work on making the back look acceptable anyway. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, sort out all these uh, front panel cables because there's a nice little slot here with like a rubber grommet in that I think will look better if I route the cables up through there. So I'm gonna do that instead. I've just sort of plugged them in to get it working at the moment, but I think it will look a, a lot better if I get them uh, plugged into that rubber grommet. It's basically what it's made for. So I'm going to start off by doing that. I think the problem with this case, even though it does have a uh, PSU shroud, is that the front of the PSU shroud is actually open. So it's probably still gonna look a little bit messy from this sort of angle, which is definitely a little bit annoying. Uh, but I can see why they've left the space there. It's sort of uh, so you can get a push-pull configuration in the front. But I would like to see maybe this uh, 
power supply shroud just have something on the end here just to hide what I'm doing underneath because I think it's still gonna look a little bit messy even though I'm sort of rooting things as best as I can. I knew this case was going to be an absolute nightmare to cable manage and I can see that that's coming true already. It doesn't look bad at all from around the front, it's just around, around the other side does not look great at the moment. doesn't look how I would want it to look. <laughs> it's definitely not looking great. Looks a little bit better. I mean, it's much better than it was than all sort of coming up with here. So I think that's probably as neat as I'm gonna be able to get it. It doesn't look the best, the more sort of resting on the power supply, but with the cables being so thick, I don't really have much choice, unfortunately. It does feel like there's quite a lot of pressure on those little pins. Yeah, I think that's the best I'm gonna get it. So now I've got uh, some cable cones. I've got some clear ones here from my build at the moment that I've sort of stolen because I thought they would look really good with the white cables, but I think they are just a little bit loose. Uh, they're just a little bit too big for these Corsair cables. So I'm gonna use the black ones that came with the power supply. I think they're gonna look okay because it is like a, a black and white themed build. So I don't think they're gonna look too bad, uh, but they are um, the right size compared to the clear ones that I've got, so I'm just gonna have to use them. It, it doesn't look like they get very many in the bag, but luckily my graphics card only has the one eight pin, so I think we should be okay. I think we're probably gonna only need one for the CPU, so I might be able to use the rest for the graphics card. Maybe I'll use two, and then I've got four for the uh, eight pin for the graphics card. Then I've got two for the 24 pin as well. So we should be able to get it looking nice, just because there's such a long run here of uh, PCIe cable. I want to make sure it's nice and neat. So I'm going to take this off to get the cable cones on, because I don't want to put any extra force on the graphics card while I'm doing this. Oh, <laughs> I put the two pin on the wrong side. That was silly. It should be on this side. Yeah, that was completely wrong. That's the test run. We'll take that as the test run. I can't believe I've messed up already. <laughs> oh dear. This is a, a sign of things to come. God, they really are on there. Okay, we'll try that again. <laughs> that was definitely a lot of effort just to try and get that in there. Blimey. I never come across such uh, tight cable cones before, especially that these are the ones that came with this power supply. So once they're in, they're definitely never coming out again. <laughs> just trying to sort of train the cable into a good position. Let's just check how that looks. I'm definitely taking my time with cable management on this side of the case. 
because this is the side you're gonna see, so you want it to look good. That looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. <laughs> it's all sort of taking shape, right? Let's do another one a bit further down. Okay, there we go. <laughs> that was a little bit difficult. I, for cable combs that come with the power supply, I really thought they were gonna be uh, a much better sort of fit. I mean, you want them to hold in place tightly, but God, I have, my hands really ache trying to get those on there. But they're on there now. I think that looks pretty decent. There's quite a lot of like kinks in the cables that are, they don't really want to come out. It looks a lot better than it did anyway. Okay, so next I'm going to try and do the 24 pin, which I think is going to be absolute hell going by trying to get those onto the, uh, the PCIe cable there because I've got a lot more cables to deal with and it's uh, gonna be a lot, it's gonna be really, really difficult to try and, oh, knock a round stick there. <laughs> it's gonna be really difficult to try and get these cable cranes on. I think I'm probably gonna do one so I can get a good bend on, but also keep all the uh, cables in place. So I'm gonna try put it around here, I think. Oh, these go in much easier. The cable seems thinner for some reason. Yeah, that was definitely a lot uh, easier to get the cables in than on the PCIe ones. I don't know why, for some reason, the cables maybe are just a little bit thinner or maybe the cable combs are just wider. But it's going in a lot more easily. Okay, let's try to get a good bend. Okay, that looks pretty good. I would maybe put another cable comb in, but I don't think it really needs that, to be honest. And I wanna make sure that it's nice and flexible on the other side for me to <laughs> try and like cable tie it quite neatly into place. So I'm just gonna move on to doing the eight pin for the CPU at the top. That's one in there. God, they are so difficult to get into place. I'm just gonna see how it looks with just the one. Mostly because I didn't wanna try and do another one. <laughs> I think that looks okay. It didn't really need one in the first place. Yeah, 
That looks pretty good. I'm not that happy with this one for the graphics card. Maybe I should get another cable comb in there. I have got an extra one. Let's give it a go. Okay, that's better. I am much happier with that. That's a much nicer like bend on the cable. I think it looks a lot neater with that extra cable comb in there. And the CPU doesn't really need, uh, the A pin of the CPU doesn't really need another one. So that's it. It's <laughs> cable management's finished from this side anyway. So let's turn it around and just take a look at the horrific mess that I've got going on around the other side. And then you can see what I'm, I'm working with because this is just gonna be absolute hell. Ta-da! <laughs> oh no! It's actually so uh, just horrendous. I think I'm gonna move the camera a little bit closer and then you can see a little bit better what I'm gonna be doing to sort of cable tie this all into place. Okay, so <laughs> the back of this PC looks like it's from some kind of horrific horror movie at the moment. Uh, one of the fan controllers has decided that it wants to fall off and stick to everything that isn't the case. So <laughs> we'll have to sort of sort that out. Uh, but the front is looking good now. It's just a case of cable tying everything down and making sure that this thing here uh, fits into place. I think it goes sort of like this. So hopefully I can thread the cables in and out of that nicely. I think it's gonna take quite a bit of time uh, probably quite a few mistakes <laughs> but I'll, I'll give it a go like hopefully I can get it looking good because a tempered glass panel is going to go on the back here so all of this is going to be on show to the world uh, the main problem is just the all the fans I've got in this case I mean if it was just a couple of fans there wouldn't be much of a problem but all the fan controls and everything and I mean I haven't even got any hard drives in the back yet uh, I'm going to be fitting them uh, later on when I disassemble my current PC because this is going to be my main PC going forward. Uh, it's much better specifications than what I've got at the moment. Uh, but uh, I haven't even got any hard drives in the back here. So I'm just trying to uh, cable manage what I've got. So I'm going to undo, I did this roughly earlier on just so I could keep these cables out of the way. But it's, it's going to be hard for sure. I'm not entirely sure where to start. I'm just sort of trying to figure out what all the cables do. Oh, I need to plug that into the SATA. So that's all the cables for the front of the case. I've got to try and remember as well, I can't just sort of shove everything into here because uh, I might have to end up doing it, but because the front of the power supply shroud is open, if I shove everything into that, it's still gonna be on show, uh, but actually on like the good side of the case. So I'd rather cable tie stuff sort of up randomly. It look a bit messy around here, as long as the front looks nice. Even though it is the back is tempered glass, I don't think there's much else I can do because of all these sort of cables and things going on. I'll get it looking as good as I can. So I've got some black cable ties for black cables and like clear slash white cable ties for the white tape cables to try and make it look a little bit neater. I've got some really big beefy ones as well, just in case I need those, but I don't think I'm going to. And then I've got the Velcro ties that came with the, uh, uh, power supply and the little Corsair ones that match what's on the case. Oh, oh, I need to plug this in. I completely forgot. This needs to go into the front. I can actually probably do that last because I think it's quite short anyway. So I can just sort of put that in at the end. I'll try and get to work on the, on the <laughs> most of this anyway. So yeah, I'm gonna start by trying to figure out what all the cables do.
I get very overwhelmed when it comes to cable management because I just don't know where to start. Once you sort of get an idea and you start cable tying stuff down, then it makes more sense. But at first it is very overwhelming for me. Let me know as well, like if you, are you someone that bothers with cable management? Do you spend a lot of time on it? Or is it something that doesn't really matter to you? Uh, for me, it's something that matters at the front, but around the back, I do go with a sort of cable tie it until the side panel fits on method. But I am gonna try quite a bit harder with this case. Try not to judge me too much <laughs> on my cable management skills. I know I'm definitely not the best. Some PCs that I see people build, the cable management is like almost more amazing than the PC itself. Especially when you've got all the custom uh, braided cables and they're all like the length that's made for that case so they all fit perfectly and you can route them really nicely but because I've got so much sort of like extra cable I think it's going to be really quite difficult to get everything looking good. Apparently a lot of figuring out and not much action going on right now. Might just have to get busy with the cable ties and uh, hope for the best. Making use of this hard drive bay. I'm not gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna do when I have to put my hard drive in this thing. Put it off for a long time probably. What's really annoying as well is this uh, PCIe cable because the way that Corsair have made the cable is that it's sort of like, do you want to call it like daisy chain off of each other? So this is connected really like high up. It's not near the power supply. So I'm going to have to almost like fold it back on itself and cable tie it to itself in order to try and get it to look neat on this side of the case definitely a bit annoying and then the two pin is like separate which is just weird to me I don't want to do the thing of shoving cables through to the other side because it's just gonna look messy but I don't know how many options I'm gonna have <laughs> cable tie this one in place. This is basically going to be hidden by that little ledge which is quite nice. I think these clear cable ties actually work really well with the white cables. They match pretty good. In an ideal world, I would use uh, some really nice cable combs and things around here, but so I just feel like there isn't the space, especially with this like extra PCIe and stuff. And I would want to route them really flat. I've seen PCs just that look amazing, but I really don't think I'm going to be able to do it with this which is a shame because of the tempered glass, but I'm just gonna have to do my best. I think we might have to bring out one of the big cable ties maybe. Let's work out where this thing goes. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can see I'm just ignoring that side of the case. If I start on this side, maybe I'll feel less overwhelmed. That's quite good how <laughs> that little ledge is there. It sort of hides that the head of the PCIe that we don't need. Okay, that side's looking pretty good. This, I think I need to cable down into there. Oh no, it's gone. <laughs> I'll have to retrieve that later on. <laughs> I've just lost him. I think there's another one down there actually. We've lost two of them. I think the cable tie is just a little bit too thick. I might have to cable tie it to this. Just want it to lie flat really. There's really not much clearance either to uh, get the side panel back on. But I think they're laying nice and flat. Oh, that side looks good. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that. That went surprisingly well. I'm hoping this bit here isn't gonna look too bad from the other side of the case. I've tried to not shove stuff in there too much. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that side of the case anyway. I think this is gonna fit the 24 pin. Yeah, that's good. So that's lined up nicely. Now I've just got to try root these in this little panel here and hope that looks okay. Because if I can get this side looking good, this side I just, I am really happy with that actually. Uh, it's, I like that the eight pins sort of, for the CPUs sneakily under there. So I'm gonna, See if I can sort out this mess. This is what's going to take the time now. black cable ties are slowly disappearing. So with this one I decided to, I'm just gonna route these cables around there, whereas this one I'm gonna try hide behind the shroud and uh, because the cables are going into the 
or the one cooler. So I'd like to get that underneath that metal shroud, whereas those ones, they're not really long enough to root down and around and up. So I've just sort of tied them in a bit of a bundle. Um, yeah, that's just gonna, it doesn't look the best really, but I'm not sure if there's much else I can do. <laughs> I think I might leave that for now and then I'll see how much is left over once I get the like metal cover on and then see how well I can cable tie that into place but I'm going to leave that for now. It's slowly taking shape, it's still looking a bit messy up the top there. Don't know how much we're gonna be able to fit under that little metal shroud. Hopefully many, many cable management sins. I'm really wondering what on earth I'm gonna do with this SATA power cable. Yay! <laughs> I think I am actually gonna be able to get that to all fit in there. That's so good. That's gonna help a lot. Obviously it's still pretty messy and stuff going on here. Oh, I've missed one as well. But I think that's definitely gonna help out a lot. I don't think that unfortunately they're not long enough to root uh, down and round. That one might be for some reason, number four. And five. But I don't think number six is gonna reach. No, we'll have to do that one up around there. This is actually looking pretty good. I'm, it's obviously not perfect, but it's so hard to do in this case. And 
It's a real shame that all of this is gonna be on show because it's not the best, especially this side. This side I'm pretty happy with. That looks pretty good once I've cut these off and neatened it up a look a bit. It will look better, but this definitely helped a lot. <laughs> it's quite, I haven't seen it on a case before, so it's quite a good feature that Corsair have got on this case. The thumb screw does not want to go in. Now I've just got to try to sort out this bit down the bottom because the rest of it I'm really quite happy with compared to what it was looking like. take this off again see if I can get some of that extra cable up in there this bit is not going to be very neat at all but luckily it's hidden from view There we go. I think that one cable was just, just trying a little too much there. I'm gonna have to leave that one out, I think. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I just need to try figure out what to do with this particular cable now. It's gonna be a little bit awkward to try and look nice. I just don't think it's gonna look good no matter what I do with it. Unfortunately, I can't get to fend that. If that wasn't there, it would look, <laughs> it would look so, so much better, but I need to find something to do with it. I think that position's gonna have to do for that one, but it means we are finished finally with the cable management once I get this cable tied down. I've just gotta put in the uh, cable for the all-in-one. This one here, just gotta finish that up, but the <laughs> horrific nest of cables that was around the back here is now finally under control. I'm pretty happy with what I've done. Uh, obviously it's gonna be, it's not gonna look fancy. Uh, I think you could do some really nice things with this case when it comes to cable management. Uh, it's just with this like fan controller and things, it's just, it's so hard to get it looking really nice, but 
It doesn't look too bad. I'm pretty happy with it. I thought it was going to look a lot worse than it is. I think the uh, shroud that Corsair have put down the middle has definitely helped quite a bit. Hopefully the side panel is going to fit back on. Right, so I'm just going to turn the case over and then I'm going to check that everything's still looking good on the other side and then I'm going to put in this uh, cable for the all-in-one cooler that I forgot to put in when I was building the build. Well, I'm finally nearly finished with this build. All the cables are managed. It's looking great. I'm really happy with how the cable management went. The final step is just for me to put in this cable that I forgot about earlier. Uh, it's the... Uh, it's a USB to micro USB cable that I think is going to power the RGB lighting on the all-in-one cooler. So I'm just going to fit that into place now. Ooh. And the cable does look a little bit short. So I've taken a USB extender cable from my other PC. So I can hopefully route this cable quite nicely around the back of the case and that, so that it reaches onto the motherboard from around the back. Because I'm surprised, like the cable that Corsair have supplied isn't that long and I want to root it nicely I don't want to ruin all the cable management that I just did so I'm going to try to get it in a good spot okay there we go <laughs> This PC is finally uh, cable managed. I just need to peel off a little bit of plastic that's on the cooler and then I can put all the side panels back on. Oh, there we go. And then hopefully it's still going to turn on. Uh, I have done the cable management now. Hopefully I've not messed anything up while well, I've been cable managing it but I think it should be fine all the cables are still plugged in as they were and uh, yeah I haven't touched the CPU or anything so it should be fine right let's get these side panels back on oh, I'm gonna start with the one on the front I think I need the screws oh no I've got to try and remember which screws are which as well uh these ones. It's been quite a while since I've had my hands on the thumb screws for the case. I've got a cloth here as well because this is the one that I peeled the plastic off of and I instantly regretted peeling off because I knew I was going to put fingerprint marks all over it. So I'm going to give it a good clean before I put it back on the case. I'm not sure which way round it goes. I don't think it is a square. You can see my fingerprints all over it. It's a problem with tempered glass. It's very hard to scratch, but it's really easy to get fingerprint marks all over it. Maybe it goes the other way. No, that's definitely not right. Ah, it's upside down. It's got a little curved edge on what must be the top. So I've got it upside down. <laughs> it just attracts so many fingerprint marks. I definitely should have peeled off the plastic after <laughs> I finished building this case. I'm gonna put the top one on next. Do another wipe down before I put it on. Oh, nope. I need to put in the filter first. Can't forget that. 
Not that I remember which way around it goes. It's been a long time. Wish I'd paid more attention when I took it out. I think that's it. Yeah. Might actually take the plastic off before I put the screws on. Make sure I get it all. Ooh. I'm so happy this build is finished. It's gonna look so good. Well done if you've made it to the end of this video as well because I think you certainly <laughs> deserve some kind of award for watching the whole thing. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you've maybe learned something if you're thinking about building your own PC. I've sort of showed you that maybe it's not as hard as you might think it is. It's okay to make mistakes. <laughs> Everyone makes mistakes. I've made quite a few silly mistakes on this build. It's certainly been a challenging one, but I'm really happy with how it's turned out. I think it looks fantastic. All right, on to the last side panel. Ooh. Make sure I've got this one the right way around. God, I'm just, I'm putting fingerprints all over it as I'm moving it around, oh dear. I'm going to be forever cleaning this case, I think, of all the fingerprint marks. Although, I don't know if I probably don't touch my PC that often, actually, once it's all set up. You can see all my cables around the back here. It is definitely very, very transparent, so it's a good thing I did a pretty okay job with the cable management. because absolutely everything is on show, but I can also put up against the wall, so it's not too bad. <laughs> but I do love this case. It's been really nice to build in. I've really enjoyed, uh, apart from all the sort of challenging aspects, I did get a little bit stressed out of time. Uh, I think probably the hardest thing was trying to put that, uh, the sleeving from cable mod on the all-in-one cooler. It just seemed to take forever. But yeah, I'm really, really happy. I'm glad that's finished. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, I've got, <laughs> I've got to name this PC as well because I name all of my builds. Sounds a little bit sad. Uh, my current PC is called Isaac. Uh, bit of a random name. But I would, I would like you guys to name this PC. Just comment below. Uh, I'd also like to start up a bit of a discussion, talk about how you do your cable management, uh, how uh, what you found interesting about this build, if you learned anything from this build, uh, just if you enjoyed the video really, how, how long you watched it for before you had enough. Uh, yeah, get a bit of a discussion going in the comments. Uh, say what you think about all the parts, what you think of the color scheme. Uh, what you do about cable management and things. Just be quite interesting to have a chat with some of you about what you think. Um, I'm also gonna do a big list of all the parts that I've used in um, on the website and also in the video description uh, on YouTube so you can see what parts and things I've used and how much everything's uh, gonna cost. Obviously this was sponsored by Corsair and Acer, so a big thank you to them. And then the monitor was sponsored by Philips, which you'll see at the end. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, hopefully you're gonna come back to watch some more Kit Guru videos in the future. And um, yeah, think of a name for this PC. See if you can come up with a good name for it.
Thank you for watching. If you like this video from Kit Gear, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more from Kit Gear, hit the subscribe button.